she was, you know, you know her story, don't you? She's an actress that she was kind of a foul mouth person. What's a poem? You know, she and wrote? she and she hated the whole um, Hollywood scene, and she expressed her hatred for them publicly, and so. Written by Kurt Cobain, Frances Farmer will have her revenge on Seattle was released on Nirvana's 1993 album In Utero. The four minute, nine second song was track number five on the album. So to understand the story behind Nirvana's song, we first have to look at the subject of the song, Frances Farmer. Farmer was born in 1913 and died in 1970 at the age of just 56. She was born in Seattle, Washington, September 19, 1913, to her mother Lillian and her father Ernest Melvin Farmer. In the fall of 1929, when she was 16 years old, her mother and father divorced. Her mother Lillian moved away while the children remained with their father. After graduating from high school, Farmer enrolled at the University of Washington, majoring in journalism. While at the university, Farmer began acting in stage productions. And after graduating, she began performing in theater before signing a film contract with Paramount Pictures on her 22nd birthday. She made her film debut in the B-film Too Many Parents in 1936 before being given the lead role opposite Bing Crosby in the musical western Rhythm on the Range. In 1939, a battle with depression and binge drinking caused her to drop out of an Ernest Hemingway stage adaptation. And in 1942, publicity of her reported erratic behavior began to surface. She was arrested and jailed overnight for suspected drunken driving. While working on a movie project in Mexico, she was allegedly charged with drunk and disorderly conduct and disturbing the peace and was forced to return to the United States. In 1943, a studio hairdresser filed an assault charge against Frances, alleging that she had hit her in the face and dislocated her jaw on set. Following these events, she was committed to a psychiatric institution and was diagnosed with having severe mental illness. At the request of her family, and particularly her mother, she was committed to an institution in her home state of Washington, where she remained a patient until 1950. Now this is where the story gets really sad. In between those years of around 1943 and 1950, while Frances was in these institutions, she was reportedly raped quite often and abused by members of the staff who worked there. You know, they, um you know, had some pictures taken of her when she was arrested for drunk driving, and um, it just, it was a big, huge scandal, and she eventually was sent to a mental institution and given a lobotomy and raped every day for years, and just totally abused and ended up, like, working at a, at a um, Four Seasons restaurant alone and dying by herself. Now, after Frances's time in these institutions, she did attempt an acting comeback mainly appearing as a television host on her own series, Frances Farmer Presents. She also appeared in one final film role that was in the 1958 drama, The Party Crashers. And it was sadly in the spring of 1970 where she was diagnosed with cancer and she died several months later at the age of just 56. Frances Farmer Will Have Her Revenge on Seattle was recorded in February of 1993 and was included on Nirvana's third studio album, In Utero. The song was recorded at Pachyderm Studios in Cannon Falls, Minnesota and was produced by Steve Albini. The song was written in 1992 and Nirvana drummer Dave Grohl recalls hearing it for the first time during a rehearsal in his basement that year. According to bassist Chris Novoselic, the song was brought to the band by Kurt pretty much intact, although the lyrics were left for last. The structure of the song is pretty much standard. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Then you go into a guitar break, which is pretty damn awesome, I might add. And then we go back to the first verse and a final chorus. So let's jump into the lyrics here, right here in the first verse, referencing the line, it's so soothing to know that you'll sue me. Well, in 1938, Frances Farmer indeed was sued by her agent who had arranged her screen test with Paramount 
and he claimed that she owed him $75,000 in manager's fees. So Francis was indeed sued, however, she did end up winning the court battle. And then we jump into the second verse, which is more heavily referenced to Francis, with the first lines here, in her false witness, we hope you're still with us to see if they float or drown. While the term false witness does reference to perjury, in other words, lying in court, and we all know that Francis Farmer had a lot of court issues and battles in her life. And so that part to me where it says, we hope you're still with us to see if they float or drown, that says to me, basically Kurt saying all the people that did her wrong and abused her, etc., to see if those people float or drown, in other words, live or die. And then our favorite patient, a display of patience, to seize cover Puget Sound. Well, the term patient there, Kurt obviously referring to her time in the institutions that she was in. And Puget Sound, that is the large body of water that surrounds Seattle, Washington, where Francis Farmer was from and where Kurt himself lived. And just talking about the Puget Sound and how it is diseased covered. Like I imagine he is referencing all those horrible acts that those people did to her. That's my way of looking at that. Makes it diseased covered, if you catch my drift. And then stating much more blatantly here, she'll come back as fire to burn all the liars, leave a blanket of ash on the ground. Well, yeah, she's dead. She died in 1970, and Kurt basically just stating here, hey, she's going to come back as fire, and she's going to burn all those liars, all those people who said they did nothing to her but actually did, and it's going to leave a blanket of ash on the ground. In other words, this triplet of lines here blatantly stating Francis Farmer getting her revenge on those people who committed those horrible acts towards her. In the chorus stating, I miss the comfort in being sad, while well, Francis Farmer was diagnosed as being a depressive and having serious mental illness at one stage in her life at least. So that could be a direct reference to that. Also, Kurt would sometimes change the subjects during a song, and maybe this line is about himself. Pure speculation. But going off the premise that this song is entirely dedicated to Francis Farmer, that line could certainly be a reference to her life as well. So, Frances Farmer will have her revenge on Seattle. Well, as far as the song goes and the tune goes, it's a really awesome, uh, perfectly fitting sounding song for In Utero. Kind of grinds along, it's a very cool song, and as I say, it's got that really cool guitar break in the middle. Several major artists have covered this song. Check out Scott Weiland's cover that's floating around on YouTube somewhere. He did a pretty cool cover version of this track. So, just a really solid song from the In Utero album. Definitely Francis Farmer, the whole story behind it, as you've heard in this video, it's a pretty sad and tragic turn of events, you might say. And interesting that Kurt decided to base a song off her life and the stuff that happened to her. Obviously something that interested him, at least. A sad story of a budding young actress whose life took a serious turn for the worst, yet she was able to come out of it and turn her life around. However, sadly, she still did die at a very young age, just 56 years old. But she has been immortalized by Kurt Cobain and Nirvana on track number five of their In Utero album. And as Kurt Cobain states that indeed she will, Frances Farmer will have her revenge on Seattle. Do you want to uh, tell us, Francis, what it was that uh, interrupted your career and brought you to the brink of disaster? Well, Ralph, it was a combination of uh, quite a few things. So much had happened to me as when I became first successful as an actress. Uh, many agonizing decisions arose that I had to make, and uh, I just wasn't mature enough and didn't have time enough to be able to make them without time and peace to think, and I didn't have it, and I had a nervous breakdown. As a result, you spent nearly 10 years in and out of mental institutions. Child of a broken home, filled with ambitions backed by talent and intelligence 
You reach the top rung of the ladder in films and on the stage. Then the curtain comes down on a kind of oblivion, and finally it rises again on the uneasy hard road back. 